Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited to tell you that version two of the performance planner is here, and I'm gonna be taking you through what's inside. If you haven't already subscribed, please press subscribe and tap the bell notification to be the first to know when I release a new video. Okay, so version two of the planner. I, if you remember the first version of the planner, remember looking at it and thinking, this is really corporate. And so for version two of the planner, I really wanted to make it really aesthetic and make it look nicer. So I've added a little gift box, which is quite glossy, as you can see, and it essentially opens. I wish I could do some ASMR on that. It opens like a little iPhone case. And inside I have the dark blue planner. Now I do have this planner in four different colors. I don't have all four with me. So I'm gonna be taking you through the contents of the performance planner. They're all exactly the same. It's just the colors are a little bit different. So the difference in already from the cover is obviously the font is very different. The design is very different. It's a little bit more aesthetic. It's a little bit smaller. It's less in your face. I've put the performance planner on the side as well. So when you put it into your bookshelf, you can see, and I've added my little signature at the back as well. So the reason why I created this planner, let me just actually talk around why I designed this planner. Two years ago, I started my podcast. And through that podcast, one of the things that started to come about was coaching. People were asking me to do some coaching. I was a management consultant at Atos, and I was on this club platform called Clubhouse. If anyone's from Clubhouse days, comment below and tell me <laughs> which one was your favorite room. But essentially, Clubhouse was this platform that was created during lockdown. It was audio only. And there were loads of rooms inside of there. And in one of them, I said that one of the things that I would love to do is coach people. And I remember one of the people on the call said, well, why don't you do it? And I said, well, I, I don't know how I would do it. He said, well, ask some, why don't we ask the audience who would like to be coached by Shivani? And there were some people that said I would. So I got in contact with them and I started coaching them. So I started coaching people around their businesses. I was already consulting for my work at the time. So it was very similar in terms of problem solving, finding a strategy, figuring out how they're gonna get to market. And every person had different problems. But one of the things that I found everyone was struggling with was finding a way to set their goals and stick to them. Now this template in the performance planner, I think is really easy to follow and I've incorporated so many different things in there to help you hit your goals, not only with your work, but also in your personal life and increase your overall performance. Hence it's called the performance planner. But I really think of it as an all in one planner and I'll explain why. So when you open the planner, the good thing about it is that it has detailed instructions in the planner to tell you exactly what to do in each of the sections. Now it's three months, it's completely undated, so you can use it at any time you like. And at the start of every month, you have a quote. Now, the really important thing around goal setting is you need to make sure you have a system in place and you have habits in place for you to reach that goal. It's very all, all very well and good having a goal, but if you don't know when you're gonna do something, if you're not actually going to have a system in place to support that goal, it's not going to come true. So this is why I created this structure in this planner because what I was finding was with my clients, they all had goals, but not, none of them knew how to achieve them. They weren't specific, they weren't measurable, they weren't achievable, and they didn't time block their day. So it was all almost like they were dreaming about something, but they didn't have the correct measures in place to actually achieve it. So I created a template. And when I was creating this template, I wasn't only just thinking around my performance at work, I was also thinking around my mental wellness. It's something I speak around a lot in my podcast. Mental health, mental wellness is really, really, really important to me. And I think so many of us miss that element every single day, so I wanted to incorporate it into this planner. Now, in this planner, at the first page, you have a place to put your goals. Now, this is a place for your big picture goals. So I always say, in this first section, write down all the goals that you want. These can be as big as you want, as crazy as you you want them, just write them all down, things that you want to do. Now, when you're setting goals, you, there are two kinds of goals that you can set. Results-driven goals, which I think are the pieces I put into this section. So for example, let's just say, I wanna get to 1 million followers on Instagram next year. That's my goal, it's not, but let's just say it is. Then I will say, I wanna reach 1 million followers on Instagram. My second goal would be, for example, I want to lose 10 kilograms or I want to gain 10 kilograms, whatever it is on there. None of these are my goals, by the way. I'm just giving an example. The third goal would be, I want to learn Spanish. And the fourth goal could be something related to, I wanna spend way more time with my family. I wanna travel more. I wanna learn new language. I wanna be more present, whatever it is. 
Now, with those goals, it's really important that they're very clear on what you want to do. Not, I want to make more money. It's, I want to make three million pounds. I want to lose weight. Instead of saying that, write exactly how much you want to lose and by when. So once you've written those goals, you can keep those there. And then underneath in this section here, you're going to break those goals down. So if I want to reach 1 million followers on Instagram next year, what do I need to do to make sure I reach that? If I want to lose or gain 10 kilograms, what do I need to do to make sure that happens? Now, the difference in these goals is the first part is results-driven goals. The second part is process-driven goals. So the results part is what you're focusing on a result, and the second part is you're focusing on a process. The importance of setting different these two different goals is that one is for one thing and the second is for another thing. The best thing about having process-driven goals is that you may not achieve that result. I may only get to 500K followers next year on Instagram, but I've hit my goal for that process because I'm gonna be posting more on Instagram, I'm gonna be posting more on TikTok, I'm gonna be posting more on YouTube, whatever it is. I'm gonna be going on other people's podcasts, I'm gonna be sharing my story, I'm gonna write a vlog, I'm gonna write a blog, whatever it is. Those processes are really, really key. And sometimes you may not always hit the results, but you've hit the process. And that's the most important part because the journey is the most, most, most important part. If you've watched my 2022 roundup, you'll see my journey has been so up and down. It has never been like this, but but those small wins and the processes are fundamental to the results. Sometimes I may not always get the results, but that's okay. I'm so focused on the process and I'm so focused on hitting a small win every single day rather than not doing anything and then not hitting that big goal either. A lot of you are asking me what's the difference between version one and version two of the planner. There is absolutely no difference in this part of the planner. I have that section for the big picture goals. I have the section on how to break them down. I also have this section where I divide it up into week one, week two, week three, week four of the month. Generally, there's four months, four weeks in a month. So in week one, week two, week three, this is all the same in version one and version two. The reason why I've done week one, week two, week three, and week four is it's very easy to say, this is what I want to achieve in a month. But when you break it down week by week, you can be really clear, really specific, and know exactly when you're going to achieve something. So in week one, if you've got a wedding, for example, you know you're not going to be able to do that much in that week. In week three, if you've got a massive deadline, you know you're also not going to be able to do that much in that week. So that gives you week two and four to allow you to focus on your goals and be really, really clear on what you can actually achieve within that month. So this is where you need to prioritize your big picture goals and say, okay what can I actually fit into my month when am I exactly going to do it I refer back to this page at the end of every week so for example for week one I will only put in what I can actually do in that week I do not fill it in for week one week two week three and week four because every week something changes for me however if you have a bit more consistency and you have a routine and you know exactly what's going to happen in each week of the month you can plan for that too personally I like to set my goals break them down and then see okay what do I want to focus on in week one Now, the next page is the weekly goals page, and this is by far my favorite page of the planner. The reason why it's my favorite page of the planner is it allows me to see my week holistically as to what I'm doing. The first thing I do every Sunday is fill this out for my week. What is it that I have to do this week? My social plans, my podcasts, my big meetings, my deadlines, whatever it is, I put them in here. What evenings do I have free? What afternoons do I have free? What mornings do I have free? You don't have to write down every single little plan. It's just your key milestones so that it will show me, okay, Monday afternoon I'm free, Wednesday afternoon I'm free, Friday I have the whole day, Sunday I have the whole day. So I can really now look at my week one goals and think, when am I gonna hit each of these targets? Is it achievable? Am I going to do it or am I setting myself up to fail? So it really helps me to see my week holistically and look down upon it and understand where I have time, where I have more space and where I have more capacity to hit my goals and do the things that I want to do. This was really beneficial to me when I had my job because I could fit my nine to five in here and I knew that I had that every single day. I also knew I had the mornings and the afternoons. And some days when I had a commitment like a wedding or a party or someone's birthday or whatever it was, I could see from that week, okay, I can't go to someone party this week one of the hardest parts about being in this kind of journey is having to say no to so many things I've had to say no to loads of my friends birthdays I've had to say no to loads of my friends parties I've missed out on people's weddings I've missed out on a lot of stuff but I'm actually okay with that decision and I'm comfortable with it I've also communicated to my close friends who also understand however you may find certain situations people don't understand because 
You have to remember your goal is really important to you, but it's not important to everyone else. But it's important that you set your boundaries in order for you to achieve that goal. If you're looking down on this weekly planner and you're going out every single day, and then you're gonna say, well, why am I not achieving my goal? It's really important for you to reflect on where you're spending your time. And that's why this is one of my favorite pages is because it allows me to see where I'm spending my time in the week and it allows me to see where I'm missing out on an opportunity for me to hit my goals. So this page is by far my favorite. It is so helpful, it's so practical. You can color cord coordinate it as well. So you wanna put all your social plans in red, you wanna put all your work plans in green, you wanna put all your family time in blue, whatever it is. It's a really good way for you to see where you're spending your week and it's a really good way for you to understand how you're spending your time. Now, the daily goals page. This is what is different in version one and version two of the planner. This is the page that is completely different. The reason why it's completely different is what I realized in the version one of the planner was it was very corporate. It had your time, your task, and it had a prioritization matrix. And what I found from listening and speaking to so many of you who use version one of the planner is not many of you were using the prioritization matrix. Now, prioritization is super important. It is essential when you're organizing your goals for you to understand where your time is going and what you should be focusing on. There are some tasks that will take you under 15 minutes. There are some tasks that will take you over half an hour. And there are some tasks that are essentially projects and they will take you hours and hours on end. You can't have all of them in one area, but the prioritization matrix for you was sometimes a little bit difficult. So what I did was I put your time, your task list, I then put an error for your top priorities every single day. So what are the three things you're gonna focus on every single day? I put in an area for the quick wins. So what are the three quick wins you're going to do? Pick up the laundry, pick up the shopping, I don't know, send this parcel off, whatever it is. All of those quick wins, they should take you between 15 and 30 minutes. Your top priorities are things you wanna focus on. And then I've added a section here on what would make today great. Now, what would make today great is a great way of understanding what would make you feel amazing at the end of every day. So many of us don't start our days intentionally. So I wanted to add a line here, which would make us understand what actually makes our day great. And for so many of us, it's very different, but there are some things that you can start to put down. You may actually struggle with this question at first because you wanna write down a million different things, but I would just start to write down one or two things that will make your day great, at the end of it, reflect and think, did that actually make my day great? Was I patient? Was I calm? Was I kind? Whatever it is that's gonna make your day great. It can be literally anything. And then at the end of the day, reflect. Sooner over time, you'll start to understand what's gonna make your day great and it will be personalized to you. Another thing that I've added here is a mood tracker. The reason why I thought it was important to add a mood tracker is I think it's very easy to go about your day and not really recognize how you're feeling. And for some people, they really hold their feelings in and then one day they'll explode. If you're like me, you're very probably aware of how you feel every single day. At one point, I wanted to get hoodies made with different moods so that everybody knows how I'm feeling one day. Still think that could be quite a good business idea. But it's really important to understand your mood so you can start to regulate it because how you feel really affects your behaviors and your actions for the rest of the day. If you're having a really bad day, it's important to reflect and understand why you're having a really bad day and see how you can make that better. If you're having a really good day, it's also really important to reflect and think, what made my day so great? Why am I waking up happy today? Why, what have I done differently? How can I repeat that? Positive mood can show you the things that you need to do more of. And a negative mood can be a really good indicator to show you things that do not make you happy that perhaps you're not really aware of. That's all included on the left-hand side of the page. And what is really important to me and what I've kept very similar, but added a few things in, into version two compared to version one, is the right-hand side of the page. Now, I have to start my day by noting down three things I'm grateful for. In the old performance planner, it was six things, which I actually really loved. <laughs> I narrowed it down on this planner because I've given you extra long lines and I've also given you more space to do right other things that I will talk about in a minute. The reason why it's so important to start your day with gratitude is because it really helps you appreciate the things that you have. There are countless amounts of studies that show starting your day with gratitude leads to an improved mood, a positive mindset, and a happier self. But I really believe in the power of just sitting back understanding what you're grateful for and writing those things down. When you write things down, you're 42% more likely to achieve them. That's with your goals. Even when you're writing down your gratitude, it's imprinted in your brain about things that you're really enjoying and things that you're grateful for. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, I don't have anything I'm grateful for, but we all have something that we can be grateful for, whether that's a cup of coffee in the morning, whether that's living inside a house, whether that's not being homeless or 
anything, whether we've had a good education. I often write, I'm so grateful for all the YouTube videos that teach me so much. So we all have something that we can feel grateful for every single day. And it's so important, especially when you're feeling low, to push yourself to write these three things down. Again, this was feedback from everyone who was using version one of the performance planner, that six things to write down everything that you're grateful for can actually be a bit difficult. So I've narrowed it down to three. I've also narrowed down three lines for affirmations. Now, affirmations sometimes have a little bit of a bad name because people think you just have to stand in front of the mirror and chant, I'm amazing, I'm amazing, I'm amazing. But it's absolutely not true. Your thoughts become your reality and the words that you tell yourself are so important. I really mean it when I believe that you are what you think. The purpose of writing down positive affirmations every day is to overcome the negative thoughts that come into your mind. We all have negative thoughts that come into our mind, but writing down positive affirmations every single day can really help in reprogramming your brain, re rewiring your thoughts, and really trying to shift a negative narrative you may have in your mind. Daily affirmations are meant for you to see yourself in a positive light. And it's really difficult sometimes to think of affirmations. I actually go on TikTok and just type in positive affirmations for success for love, for happiness, whatever mood I'm feeling in that day. But I just literally go on TikTok and type them in. But there are some that are fundamental to me and I'm gonna share them with you now. One affirmation that I have been saying for so long is I am so lucky and good things always happen to me. Because I believe in life when you're going through something and you're down, if I believe I'm so lucky and good things are happening to me, then I know that there's a higher purpose out there for some of the things that are going wrong. On the days that things are going really well and I say I'm so lucky, I just reinforce the fact that I'm so lucky and good things are always happening to me. So that's one affirmation that has been so powerful for me and I say it every single day. I also say, Love comes to me easily and effortlessly in all forms. So that's love in terms of everything, with friendships, with relationships, with anything, with my guests, anything like that, I always say that. And the last affirmation that I say every day is, I am becoming the best version of myself every single day, and I am working on myself every single day. This really helps me believe that I'm always a work in progress. And I think it's really difficult in this journey to not want to be perfect. And I think it's really difficult in this journey to sometimes forget that you are just a work in progress. I haven't done this before. This is my first time doing it. I'm gonna try every single day to be better. And that's all that I can do. And reminding myself I'm a work in progress humbles me, but it also lets me be easy on myself when I make a mistake. Practicing daily affirmations can help you overcome fear and self-doubt and everyone will have a different affirmation that works for them. I truly believe affirmations have really, really helped me and it is the nicest way to start your day when you're writing something down like I have limitless potential and the universe is rigging everything in my favor. Good things are happening to me. I mean, how can you have a bad day when you're starting your day writing those things about your life? I already feel better and I'm smiling because I'm saying those things. So try the affirmations. If you don't get the journal, just please try writing affirmations every single day as well. They are really, really powerful and they can really help to start your day in a more positive way. That rhymed. Another thing that I've added in this planner, which I didn't have before, again from feedback from you all, is a habit tracker. Now, I've added five habits in here. One of them is to drink a certain amount of water. Again, I haven't put limits because some people want to drink one liter, some people want to drink three liters, some people want to put five liters. So I've added a dash, dash line there for you to fill out all of these metrics yourself. These are just some of the things that I think have been really helpful in terms of things that we should be tracking, in terms of habits that are gonna help us feel happier, feel better, and increase our performance and our productivity. So we've got water, we've got hours of sleep. Again, I do not like to say, oh, I need 10 hours of sleep, or oh, I need eight hours of sleep. If you followed me for a long time, you know that I don't sleep that much. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but for me, to put down on their eight hours of sleep every night is too much. That's my personal opinion. I wouldn't wanna sleep for that long and I can't ever sleep for that long. But for some people, they desperately need eight hours of sleep, nine hours of sleep, 10 hours of sleep. Mine is around six, seven hours of sleep. So everyone has their own metric and that's why I've made sure that I've personalized this for everyone to fill out their own metric. Minutes of movement. Now it's so important that we move our bodies. I know that it's really difficult sometimes to go for a run every day, to go to the gym every day. Me personally, again, if you followed my journey, you'll know that I found it very difficult to stick with the gym just because I have been super, super busy. But one thing that I do do every single day is I do do some form of movement, whether that's stretching, whether that's yoga, whether that's going for a walk. I have cut back on the gym 
a massive amount, but I still make sure that I do at least 30 minutes of some kind of movement just to keep my body going. Otherwise, I think I would feel very lethargic. And on the days that I haven't done that, I have noticed a massive dip in my mood. I really believe that moving your body for even 10 minutes a day can be really impactful, which is why, again, I haven't put a time limit on there. Self-care. Now, self-care has been thrown around a lot this year, but I think it is something that we all need to do. You would never cancel an appointment with someone else, so don't cancel an appointment with you. Make sure you're taking five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever time you can to spend on yourself every single day. This could be doing a face mask, this could be putting oil in your hair, this could be reading a book, this could be lighting a candle and doing some deep breathing, this could be doing some meditation, whatever it is. But spend at least 10 to 20 minutes every single day just on being by yourself and being present with you. It is really a game changer for me to just sit by myself in my room with a candle on and breathe in and just take some space. I promise you it is so valuable to have time alone, especially for me. I love time alone. If you've known me, you know I say that all the time but it really helps me to feel connected to myself and it really helps me to manage that inner voice as well when I just have time to sit in solitude. I've also put as the last recommendation as such, minutes of learning. Now, I've put a book emoji here, but that could really be a podcast, it could be a YouTube video, it could be anything really, but I think it's really important to try and learn something every single day. It doesn't have to be something miraculous, it could literally be as small as reading a quote and understanding what that quote means and applying it to your life. It really doesn't have to be that crazy. But unfortunately, I couldn't put like a YouTube emoji, a book emoji, a tablet emoji, a video emoji, loads of different things. But I think it's really important every day for us to learn something new, do something that's a little bit different, see what else is out there and learn a different perspective. The main point of this podcast was to share different perspectives and I love doing that and I love learning from my guests. And I think it's a really powerful thing for us to do to continuously improve and be the best version of ourselves. I've also left a little space for anyone to add their own personalized habit. These habits that I've put in here are very generic, but I think that they definitely will help your performance and your productivity and your overall mental wellness. So I've added a little space there for you to add anything else that you think I've missed out, or anything that is personal to you. One of the videos I uploaded at the start of this year, if you go back and you watch it, I said it in my 2022 roundup. I went to my mom's work, I took a fake microphone, it is not connected, and I started filming these videos because I really wanted to start sharing more of my own thoughts rather than just sharing it behind what my guests were saying or what we were talking around on the podcast. And one of the things that I think has been so powerful, and I've shared it with so many of my friends and some of my clients too, that has really helped them practice self-love is to write down a list of things that you're proud of that you've done. Now, at the end of the year, or when you're feeling low, is when you kind of need this list, right? When you're feeling upset, you're thinking, what can I do to get out of it? And I always tell my friends, right, this is what you need to do. Write down a list of things that you feel lucky to have and write down a list of things that you're proud of. Now, I talk a lot about strengths-based leadership in a lot of my workshops. I've spoken about it a lot on this podcast, but I believe 100% each of us have our own strengths. We all have our own unique skill. We all have our own unique talents. Some of us work harder to get those skills and talents, and some of us, they come naturally to us. But every single one of you that is watching this podcast or listening to this podcast has something within you that nobody else has. You have something so special around you and often it's really, really difficult to know what that is unless you're reflecting every single day. Reflection is the number one thing that I would recommend to anyone if you could drop anything in the world drop everything else, just don't drop reflection because being reflective helps you to understand yourself so much and it helps you to be really, really self-aware. And in the video that I uploaded at the start of this year, I shared a self-love tip and that was to note down, what are you proud of every single day? So in version two of this planner, I have created a section to say, today I am proud of and I want you to write every single day something you're proud of doing. And that could be the smallest of things or it could be the biggest of things. But remember, you should feel proud of yourself every single day for something that you're doing. There is something that you would have done every single day that someone probably wouldn't have been able to do that day. And even if it's something that someone would have been able to do, you should feel proud about doing it. I'm proud of the fact that today, Two of my podcast guests canceled on me and I'm recording this video when I had absolutely no time to prepare it. But 
I'm proud of the fact that I sucked it up, even though I want to cry and go home and go to bed because I'm feeling really low and overwhelmed right now. I'm proud of the fact that I'm here. Now, on other days, it may just be I'm proud of the fact that I made myself a nice lunch or I'm proud of myself that I read a book before bed or I'm proud of myself that I changed my bed sheets. It could be anything, but I want you to write down something you're proud of yourself about every single day so that you don't have those moments where you're thinking, I've done nothing, I have nothing to be proud about, I'm your self-loathing and you're feeling so low. I've been there where I think I have nothing to offer, I'm rubbish at everything, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm crap at everything, I just wanna give up. And sometimes you all are gonna have those days, but you'll always have your planner where you can go back and see the things that you're proud of doing. And that's why I really wanted to put that in there. Now, another piece of reflection, which is the same as the first planner, it's what did I do well today or enjoy? The reason why I've put that in there is I've just said how important it is to identify your strength. But like I said, it's very difficult for me to ask you right now, okay, whoever's watching, you that's watching, tell me all your strengths. You won't be able to tell me. I'll ask you right now, tell me all your weaknesses. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. You'll have a long list because we're so focused on our weaknesses and we're not focused on our strengths. And when you go to an interview, when you meet someone for the first time, when you're networking, whatever it is, you need to know what your strengths are. You need to have that confidence within yourself. You need to have that power within you to know that you are good at so many different things so that when that opportunity arises, you are prepared and you are ready. If you meet someone and you think, wow, I'm really good at editing and I would love to edit their podcast, let's say, for example, whoever you are out there, come and find me. Whenever you meet that person, you'll be like, I know I'm good at editing. They're looking for a podcast person or they're looking for an editor. Let me offer my services. But you're only going to know that if you reflect. Now, that's a bit of a silly example, but you're kind of getting what I mean, right? It's really important to write down every single day something you did well or that you enjoyed. Because there are going to be some things that you perhaps didn't do very well, but you enjoyed them. And that's okay. Because generally, the things that you enjoy, you'll want to do more and more and more of, which means competence increases confidence and you'll get even better every single time so generally it's really important to identify the things that you enjoy you'll want to do them more and more you'll become an expert boom you smashed it <laughs> now not every day is going to be great and not every day you're going to enjoy something but there is going to be something that you can often reflect of and think i could have done that better this happens to me a lot of the time by the way because I don't know about you, I'm quite negative and quite critical of myself. So I always find that that's the part I fill out very easily straight away in the planner. What could be better tomorrow? Um, everything, everything went wrong today or sometimes when I'm having a good day, I will always still always write something that could be better tomorrow. Now, what could be better tomorrow is also a question I've rephrased in version two of the planner. In version one, it could be, what didn't I do so well or enjoy? But in version two of the planner, I've written what could be better tomorrow? And that's because I wanted to reframe it into a more positive way about what we could change. It's really important to identify things that could be done better so that you learn from them. Mistakes are absolutely fine. Failure is absolutely fine, but only if you learn from them. So it's a really great way to continuously improve, for you to constantly identify gaps in your life where you think you can improve, and then you can understand how can you can improve those things too. So that is the end of the page. If you look at this page, it may seem that that's quite a lot of information, but it really takes me under 10 minutes to fill everything out. And it just starts my day so well because I'm so clear about what I need to achieve. When I had my full-time job and I had my podcast, there is no way on planet Earth I would have been able to manage without my performance planner. I love my planner more than anything in the world because it really helps me stay organized. And now with so many different things that I'm doing, the only way for me to prioritize my work, the only way for me to stay organized, and the only way for me to spend time on my wellness every single day is by using this planner, which takes me less than 10 minutes to fill out every single morning. I have shared every single page with you in this video, and I'm not urging you to buy this planner but I promise you that if you use this template and you can write it down, I did this with version one too, I have no qualms with you taking this template and writing it down in your own notebook, you fill it out every single day, I promise you it will help you increase your performance and your productivity and increase your mood as well. The great thing about this planner is that it's three months, it's completely undated, so you can start it whenever you want. I've done it for seven days a week as well, so for a lot of people who work on weekends, it's really perfect for you. If you don't work on weekends, that's fine. You can just leave those pages blank and come back to them at another time. But it is really, really helpful in providing a really easy structure for you to track your progress every single day. I used to have a separate gratitude journal, a separate affirmation journal, a separate goal setting guide, a separate to-do list. 
Why would you have four different things when you can have them all in one? And there really isn't anything on the market like this planner and journal all in one because I've combined so many different things into this. At the end of every week, one of the things that I've also changed in version two of the planner is I've created a weekly review. Here you can identify your key wins for the week, tasks to carry over into the next week, your key learnings from the week, and next week's priorities. That means that the things that you didn't complete this week, you can make sure that they're a priority for next week, and you've tracked everything in one place. So three months of your life is gonna be in one place where you can reflect at the end of that three months and see everything you've noted down to. There's also loads of space for you to write other notes and some space at the back as well for you to have some free space to write whatever you need to do. But what I really love about this planner is that you just need one thing to carry with you to monitor your progress for you to reach your goals and for you to elevate your performance I've also added a monthly review in as well so you can use that at the end of every single month so that when you're going into next month you can also see what your top priorities are and the things that you perhaps missed in last month that you want to carry over into the next month I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you like the planner. For everyone who has got to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you 10% off the planner with code PLANNER10. If you like this video, please follow, like, and subscribe. And please follow my Performance Planner account to get more details. I'll leave the link in the bio. I hope you all have an amazing day and I can't wait to see you all hit your goals in 2023.